So I'm going to say one more, kind of give you one more walkthrough video. Um, one of the things I wanted to just show you in terms of the design of this project was some of the structure of the files and um, actual structure of the code and the data visualizations themselves because I think it's helpful to just spend a few minutes um, you know, walking through some of those things. I talked a little bit in depth in, in the web text and showed some examples of some of the things I had to do in order to make the visualizations work. And also, you know, part of the thing that I wanted to really, you know, stress is that part of my goal is not just to offer the visualizations, but to offer, you know, a richer account of, of firefighters practice as, as a visualized thing, or just as a representational thing. So, you know, that's why I, I thought it was really important personally to include the audio recordings, um, you know, and offer, you know, an, an example of what that um, element of practice sounds and looks like. I think um, the data visualizations themselves kind of abstract in a way that don't allow um, people to fully experience what those those practices kind of feel like um, is maybe the best way of getting at it. All right, so in this data viz folder, um, I want to hop in here and show you some stuff. So uh, as I mentioned, you know, in the design ops page, uh, one of the things I had to do in order to make those visualizations interactive was to create a set of, um, you know, pages for each single um, thing. So like on the Burke visualization, which you've seen, there's a Burke Alpha, a Burke Oral, a Burke Cognitive, a Burke Kinesthetic, a Burke On Scene. You know, that's the full representation of that visual, that ecology. There's an Oral, there's a Space Time. And then there's a standalone page, so if you click, you know, that isolate page, um, it brings you there, and that offers a little bit better representation. Um, there's some stuff to do with the iframe for that, but I'm not going to go into much detail on that. Now, you'll notice that I've offered some other ones in here that I haven't talked about, and I actually want to show you, like, one of those. So I'm going to go to environment. So one of the things I just wanted to note that, you know, when you were looking at the orderville, the observational data, it... it one of my personal like things that gets frustrating clicking through these visualizations is when I try to you know model at scale, um, the actual text nodes get in the way of like the other text nodes. So if you have a big word environment and it can stretch all the way to fire, it's going to block that when you hover over, it's not going to allow the hover over to occur. So that's one of the design limitations that's kind of frustrating. But to fit it in an iframe screen, um, I had to uh, I had to kind of shrink the size of the SVG element so that you could get a sense of the whole thing as or the visualization as a whole. And so one of the things I've been doing is kind of pulling out those segments. So this is the environmental, um, you know, the view of the environmental. Uh, segment from Orderville's practice. So again, you have the national standards that I talked a little bit about. And then you have Special Hazards 1. Um, you have SOGs, SOPs, tool use, NIMS, ICS, that framework that people use to um, manage scenes, um, radios, you have the fire. So these are the parts of the environment that are really shaping practice in really influential ways. And so what you see is that there's a lot of alphabetic um, and visual elements um, in this node in particular. And I think that's pretty significant, um, you know, but there are also the fire itself, the heat and the superheated gases, which one can feel, you know, the heat from, from both um, the fire and the, and the superheated gases. Um, that is, uh, that's a significant kind of thing worth noting that that's a unique kind of element of practice. You're probably not going to see that um, in every environment, um, or at least not to the extent that you do here, uh, where you have smoke also. Again, um, people reading smoke visually and uh, seeing how it's behaving and moving through space. So that's why I, spa I, I coded that for space time there. So just kind of some, some more rationale. And uh, I think that this is helpful because it offers a little bit more of, um, you know, spread out view where you can kind of get into the nodes and think through it a little bit um, better. So I think, you know, when you have more complex um, practice or a larger network, 
um, breaking out those nodes and pulling them out is, is probably a smart thing um, to do. So I would suggest considering doing that. So I'm going to click out of this and then go back into here. Um, another thing I did, which I haven't shown in that web text either, is I also built these comparative, um, comparative visualizations. So this is um, Chief Burke and Lieutenant Lamb on scene. And so if you see here, we have Lieutenant Lamb and then you'll have Chief Burke over here. So um, comparing two people who are managing a scene to one another. This gets kind of tricky looking at it as a whole again because it's pretty complex and big. And so one of the things like I have Bob observe, Chief, Chief Burke observe, so be observe versus um, Lieutenant Lamb observe, so L observe, Lamb observe. And so we can see that there are probably some similarities in practice, like they're both reading smoke, for instance. Um, so that's the one connecting that is definitively um, similar. But then we have like monitoring watch, monitoring crews outside, um, monitoring crews inside. Now, those are things that um, Chief Burke kind of talks about, but didn't ex initially expressly state um, in all the same ways. You know, he had mentioned like 360 collapse zone monitoring crews as well, right? But um, not, you know, specifying inside or outside. Um, but we get a richer view of what he's doing than we do from, you know, from just me inferring what I think I see Lieutenant Lamb doing on an observational scene, right? So, you know, I think when we look at the interview data versus the observational data, we're able to see some different things. And I think this, this comparative visualization here in particular offers that ability to see that. Um, so that's the last kind of part of that that I want to show you. So there's different ways to play with um, the data once you have it set up. And you can build different, you know, visualizations by pulling out the data and kind of setting them up. For instance, like I could, you know, just say like, what are the ways that alphabetic um, practice, you know, impacted or connected to um, Lieutenant Lamb and Chief Burke? So from Lieutenant Lamb, we see, you know, in the planning, in the planning structure, he is an accountability board, you know, they're, so they're both, you know, in their planning structure, both Chief Burke, you know, are using accounti account accountability boards and tags. Um, I see that, you know, Lieutenant Lamb had his tag on the board. Um, and then, you know, where there's a significant difference in the planning is that I see that, you know, Lieutenant Lamb was not using an iPad or writing things down um, during the drill. It's also a drill where there's a lot less going on than a real incident. So in terms of comparison, it, it, it's, it's similar in that, you know, people are doing the activities that are comparable but the complexity of a uh, actual structure fire versus a training fire where um, maybe one company is doing some practices, it's just um, there's going to be less uh, activity to manage and account for. So, you know, you can do that maybe with your uh, your active memory a little, a little better. Um, and then also we see down here, you know, the Chief Burke talking about the search crew again. Um, so there's that. So I want to just pull into one of these things. So within the assets, um, I'd mentioned that you had to make, again, like in the Burke, independent um, JavaScript files for each of these. So I've pulled those up. I'm going to go into, um, let me see. I'll just go here and we'll walk through that just to show you that data structure. So here's what the, the data structures look like. And I'd mentioned that there's key branches um, here. And so when I set this up, um, I, you know, I try to begin by saying, what are, what's the key objective? And then I built from there, you know, the key branches to work from. And then, you know, you can see that there's the observational segment here. And so you see how I'm building each, you know, source is connecting, 360 is connecting to 360, and it's connecting to observe. Um, radio communications is connecting to, to observe. Um, radio communications from that, there's a sub um, area that has evaluation, evaluate reports. 
message tone. So, you know, there's ways that you can have a hierarchy here and plan for that. And that helps you kind of get a sense of how to read through and look through this data. Um, I'm not going to go through all this now, but I would say that those that are interested in um, kind of spending some time and, and really getting a sense of this kind of or doing this work themselves, um, I would really encourage you to kind of come into this area of the web text and, um, you know, click into the files and dig in, you know, dig into those um, into that root level. Um, so to get here from from the root, you know, you'd be on a page and you'd go into the uh, data viz folder and then you have the key pages and then you have within the ecology assets the javascript and you can pull out some of that and look at that so that's how i would say to navigate to there to investigate that um, but again you can see like the environment pulled out alone looks like this um, i think one of the last things i just want to mention is that you know by spending time cutting the data in different ways you know building like this is the burke lamb comparative um, ecology here. This is the Burke standalone. This is the environmental segment I showed. Um, there's some other ones where, you know, I didn't show them, but there's also like a wearable segment um, and lamb, you know, segment alone independent. These are all, you know, pull ways of pulling out data from one one thing, and then you know you can do comparative models. So it's kind of exciting to to think about what the potential here is. Um, so thanks again for your time.